Hi everyone, my name is Carmen and welcome to my channel. Today I am finishing the sweater and my voice is still not <laughs> not back to normal but I am sort of back to work today. I am going to attempt half day of work um, and I am going to finish little things on this sweater such as the ends and um, during that I wanted to chat to you all um, I've been watching a British show and I feel like it's been influencing my accent but it might also be uh, the COVID voice so <clears throat> um, and this is a pattern of mine and I am opening a testing call soon, um, so yeah, I just wanted to chat to you all about that. Um, I've not decided on a name yet. Um, in my head it's the Strawberry Latte Sweater because that's... I, I just started this as a project for myself. I thought, yeah, I'm not going to write up a pattern. Than I did because I can't help myself and uh, the name strawberry latte was uh, brought about uh, actually by this colorway I've not actually had a strawberry latte ever <laughs> I'm not I'm not a coffee person although I am drinking some iced coffee I find that ice drinks works really well for um, for a sore throat um, I do, however, really like uh, strawberry milk tea. Uh, that was one of my favorites when I lived in China. So, um, yeah, I just, I thought, okay, strawberry for the slight pink hues, and there's another, like, pink stripe here, and this yarn is also kind of pink, um, more purple, actually. And then the, the white cream it can kind of be the latte foam but I'm not sure whether that will be a good name I think um, you know this is such a basic sweater so I wanted to have a more uh, SEO friendly name so a more searchable name um, right now it looks like a turtleneck and you could certainly knit this as a turtleneck but uh, I am going to fold and sew the brim like this or maybe outwards if I still have to decide on whether I like an extra kind of border here because if you sew it in inwards then it is more seamless but it yeah I haven't decided yet so yeah it could just be the stripey sweater but uh, that, oh, I don't know, that might be too plain, and I don't think, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I haven't decided yet. So, um, it's knit from the top down, and it has a round yoke, um, it's very easy to knit, um, you separate for the sleeves, it's pretty much uh, the same construction as my Around the World sweater, so if you've knit that, you'll know basically how this one is knit. Uh, my Around the World sweater pattern is a free pattern. Uh, you can also buy the um, um, the PDF. The PDF is, you know, uh, available to purchase, but the pattern is for free. It's just, you know, if you like an um, easy printable, then you can get the PDF. So today I'm going to sew up some ends and um, I have left this project for a while. I think I cast it on last year in December, or maybe just this January, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I picked it up again in June when, uh, when my boyfriend and I went to Wales, and yeah, I finished the body, and then a couple of weeks ago I picked it back up uh, to knit the sleeves, and then uh, I tried it on, <laughs> I saw this little hole. So, um, yeah. It's either been snagged on something or there has been moth damage. You know, either one of the two. So, um, 
but it's it's not a big deal because I can fix it. Um, if you'd like to know how, I have a physical mending masterclass also on my Patreon page. Um, it's available at the um, Yona Hold tier, so the the first tier, um, and it's called. Darnit Masterclass. Yeah, the Darnit Ma Mending Masterclass. Um, yeah, but I still have enough of the white yarn left um, and even this like little ball, so I'm going to use that for the mending. Um, this main color is White Orchid by Atelier Sopra. Atelier Sopra is a, um, well, it's owned by Jose, who's a Dutch indie dyer. Um, she dyes beautiful yarns. Um, I got a really beautiful dark green from her before, and two skeins of this, which um, is her extra fine superwash merino wool. It's 100% merino. Um, and it's 400 meters per 100 grams. It's very very plump and I really like that about it um, <clears throat> and so I, I bought 200 grams and I still have this left I uh, mm, this is maybe still like 40 grams I think and I knit this whole sweater Obviously, I used a lot of stripes as well, but the white in here is just from these two skeins. And I have made a size, either a size 38 or a size 40 for myself. I can't remember uh, that, that being the inch size for the bust. So either it's 38 inch bust or a 40 inch bust. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll weigh it uh, before I block it to be sure how many grams that I used. Um, and then for the stripes, I used uh, one skein of Hedgehog Fibers uh, for this stripe, this stripe, and then this stripe, and then also on the sleeves. Um, so that's the color that I used most. And um, that ball is in the freezer right now because uh, um, because it might be moth damage on here. Um, I want to put all of this yarn in the freezer to get rid of any moth eggs. So that's why. But um, yeah, it's uh, Hatchock Fibers in Damsel. And I think it's really, really beautiful. Um, it has uh, purples and greens and... I just think it's gorgeous. Um, this one is a mini that I got from Gregoria Fibers. Um, I'm not sure if she's still dying, I think so. Uh, Gregoria Fibers, she's either in Italy or Spain, I can't remember. And this was a mini that I got with one of my orders. Um, this pale green is also a mini can't remember where I got it, but it does show that, you know, for these, you can use up minis. Um, and, you know, if, if you run out, then you make smaller stripes. So um, I think that the sweater is very customizable like that. Um, I do think that these were 10 gram minis. Um, yeah, I think so. They weren't like 20 gram minis because, um, you know, th those aren't really minis anymore. Um, and then the light green is some Ushi Tita uh, in Apple Martini. I got it years ago. It's a high twist yarn, really beautiful. Um, and I still have this much left, so... I, I did not use much at all. Um, I would also say that for the stripe it's probably like 10 grams. And then um, I use it in the sleeves twice as well. Um, and then this one is from a very precious skein of mine. Oh, which is already in the freezer. <laughs> it's uh, Indoorsy by um, Full and Vine. And... It's my one and only skein that I got from her, and 
I wanted to include it in this. Uh, I still have a bunch left of that, and uh, um, I've already knit a headband from that skein, and there's still, I think, uh, more than half left. And then the last one that I used, this dark green, is by Wool Met Verve, also a Dutch indie dyer, Sylvia. I used this, um, I think the colorway name is Avocado, but it was years and years and years ago that I purchased this. It was for my Christmas socks. Uh, some of my faithful uh, viewers will remember my Christmas socks, the ones that I worked on for years, uh, like a pink background and a little dark green Christmas trees. Um, this is the color that I used for the trees and it's just really beautiful, rich green and I, I hadn't, it, you can see it's a bit different than the rest of the stripes. That's because, um, yeah, I hadn't thought of including this before I planned the sweater. So uh, in hindsight, I might have put it somewhere more up top. Um, but I think it actually looks nice. So, um, yeah, even though it's much darker than the rest, but I really like it. And now, <laughs> I am going to write up the pattern for this and I don't expect it to be done soon. I mean, I'll write up the pattern soon enough for the testers to begin, but uh, I know it's quite a long project, so um, I'm not going to plan on publishing this this year, I don't think. Um, yeah, because <laughs> I knit this entire sweater on 3mm needles, I know, with fingering weight yarn, um, and I do think that because I knit very loosely that most other people uh, will be okay with using 3.5mm because I just knit so loose. Um, so, oh, I'm not using my sharp needle. Right. Um, yeah, so I do think people will be able to use three and a half millimeter, but you know, uh, just just so so you know, it's quite a time investment. Um, but I do think that this gives me the nicest fabric, and the tighter you knit it. The, the the longer it will last um, and that goes for pretty much everything you know from socks to shawls to sweaters um, I mean for shawls you obviously want them to be flowy but um, yeah so I I don't see this as a problem but um, I can understand if others don't want to spend as much time on their knitting projects but I think you know this will be such a staple piece and because I used so many colors that I like but it's still very subtle I think I will be able to pair it with uh, you know pretty much anything um, I think I have lots of uh, skirts but also um, trousers that will pair well with these um, with these colors. I knit the neck ribbing I think on 2.25 or 2.5. In hindsight um, I might have used a larger needle for that. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean for now it just feels a little bit choky. But uh, that might also be resolved by uh, fixing the, like, adjusting the stitch count a little bit or by blocking. So I am going to just make a note of that and then um, try it on again after blocking and see, uh, see if that has helped. And, you know, I can always, like, put a balloon in here while it's blocking. Um, it's not always a good idea because that might stretch it out like until it's no longer nice to wear. But uh, And I, I definitely used a 2.25 
for the sleeve cuffs and I really like that because uh, I don't want any draft going up my sleeves and I made them very long. These are 28 rows uh, so I can turn them over. And the sleeves are uh, the, the best fitting thing on this sweater. I'm really liking the sleeves. Um, one thing that I want to adjust for the yoke is, can you see those wrinkle lines here and here? Like in these white stripes, you see some wrinkle line there, you see it there. And I'm, I think it will kind of smooth out by blocking, but those are increased rounds. And I did not think they would be so noticeable. And uh, what I would do differently, and what I will also ask my testers to do, is to put the increase rounds in one of the colored stripes, because that be uh, will obscure them more. Um, or, you know, if your base color, mine is white, if yours is darker than your stripes, um, you know, I would just make the increase rounds in the darker colors that you have. So for me the stripes are darker so I should have put them in the stripes because I think that would have been less noticeable. Um, now this stripe is very uniform so I think it might have been more noticeable there but these are so heavily speckled and variegated that I think I should have moved the increase rows there. Um, yeah so uh, lots of things that I will um, also tell my my test knitters. Uh, if you want to test knit for me, I should have mentioned this sooner, uh, I have a Facebook group and it has a very original name, Carmen Joresen Tester Group. <laughs> I will I will put it on the screen because my uh, my surname isn't too uh, friendly for uh, non non Dutch people. Um, and I will put up a call for testers there. Uh, I will have this um, sweater pattern graded in the same sizes as the Around the World sweater. Uh, and that one is from 32 inch to 62 inch. Um, that's a bust size. So that's, I think, from XS to 5XL or 6XL. Um, I, I always try to go by actual bust size, um, you know, and, and that, those numbers that I said are actual bust size and then the sweater will have more ease, so, um, um, yeah, I always like to go by actual measurements rather than SML because there is so much variety within those labels and I think, um, I think it's not always clear. And I, I just keep talking and not actually working on my sweater. Uh, that's fine though. I will, I will also do this later. Um, but I, I also feel that if I were to label my garments as SML and so on, um, well, firstly, it's um, uh, there's a there's a bit of judgment in those in those terms and I, I don't like that I don't be I don't like to label people as small or large or whatever you know um, and secondly um, I think that if I use those labels then people will not really measure themselves before picking a size uh, because they're like, oh yeah, well, for this fast fashion brand, I'm always a, a size 2XL, so I'll do that here as well. But, um, you know, I, I, as I said, there's so much variety within those labels. So I'm hoping that if I actually um, give the, the, the measurements, um, as as the size and not label it any further. Uh, I hope that people will actually take the time to measure themselves uh, so that uh, so they can choose a size that's right for them um, and not a size that they think they always have or you know. So 
so yeah, I'll be opening the testing call soon. Uh, um, it'll be a couple weeks before I have the pattern ready, but just to give people a time to, um, some time to um, say that they're interested in testing for me. Um, with this testing call, I won't be able to provide yarn support, but it does mean that um, that what you knit, you can just keep it yourself. I won't need it for pictures. Um, in some of my other tests, uh, which are actually also sample knits, I usually provide yarn support, and then um, but then I will need the the samples for photography as well. Um, Right, uh, so I think <laughs> I think I'll just let you go for now because I've blabbed on enough. And oh, one one more thing actually, because I do think this is very helpful. Uh, on the first sleeve, I put little bits of yarn whenever I increased, uh, uh, decreased, and that was really helpful for me. Not only because I want to. Um, copy it for the second sleeve but also for writing the pattern so that's a tip for knitters and designers out there um, yeah and if you'd like more tips and tricks then please go over to my patreon page where I have already uh, put up um, I think it was last year or the, or the year before my sweater knitting masterclass uh, which features my around the world sweater um, and in that class it's it's a full um, sweater knitting tutorial series and yeah in that series I knit through the entire sweater with you um, and you know, I show you everything from the color work to the increases to the short rows to the spling, splitting for the sleeves, uh, picking up stitches. It's just, uh, you know, everything you need to know. And if the color work freaks you out, you can just knit it in one color. Um, it's it's the same uh, the same techniques, but you know, less. <laughs> um, so yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll have to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.